Hands-On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products Incorporated, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. Elmer's.com Florocraft, the Dow Chemical Company, Styrofoam brand foam, make it fun. Florocraft.com Styrofoamcrafts.com Travel around the world on this season of Hands-On Crafts for Kids. We're visiting a different country each episode and learning about their culture and traditions through crafts. Every project has five steps and five main ingredients, plus you'll want to keep basic supplies like scissors and markers and toothpicks and even a ruler on hand. Remember, be creative. It's fine to change colors or patterns to make your project your own. So let's learn about different countries with fun craft ideas. Japan is an island country located east of Asia. It's made up of hundreds of smaller islands but four main islands. The country has a rich history with great ties to the past. Many of their cultural traditions have been handed down for generations. Our first craft is an adaptation of a tamari ball which creates a beautiful round ornament. Next learn a little bit about the ancient art of bonsai and miniature trees. Then it's time for a simple look at origami. We're folding paper into a fish design. Last up, learn about traditional Japanese pottery and Japanese symbols. I'll be right back with our first project. Our first project is a tamari ball. Tamari is a traditional Japanese craft usually involving very intricate embroidery designs. We're creating a simple example using yarn. Here's what you'll need. I've chosen three colors of yarn, then I have black yarn for the base. I have a styrofoam ball, a rubber band, a bell, plastic needle, and a few pins. In our basics, I also has, have glue, scissors, and a plastic knife. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is to cut our ball in half. I'm using a serrated plastic knife to cut it in half. And I'm going to just pop it open. And all I want to do is put the bell inside. I'm going to add a little bit of glue onto the ball and then glue the two pieces together. We'll let that set aside and dry. Let's see if I can get that all nice and tight. Now what we want to do is start wrapping the ball. Now as I said in traditional tamari it would be an embroidery design. Here we're just using yarn to wrap. So I'm going to place it under my thumb and begin wrapping. I'm going to wrap in the center first and keep angling just a little bit until I go all the way around the ball, catching that tail in so that it doesn't unravel. Now I'll continue going all the way around until the ball is completely covered and then tuck the ball or tuck the tip underneath. Now I want to find the center and the easiest way to do that is to take a rubber band and put it over the ball. That way you can find exactly where you want to stitch. Now I've taken a needle and thread. I've threaded about two yards of blue yarn on a plastic needle and I'm going to just weave it underneath a little bit of the yarn. You see it's a very short tail and I'm going to pull my needle out. Now I'm going to wrap around and once we get our center we can slip that rubber band off and make a nice tight weave and go all the way around. When I get to the very end, I've got a little knot there so I'm going to just trim that off. I can use my needle or I can just tuck it under easily. 
A little dab of glue there will hold that in place. I've got one completed here. Now I'm ready to move on to the next color. Again, I'm going to make a very, very short tail. I'm going to thread right underneath this blue. This is just making it easier to get underneath. And now I'm going to do yellow right next to the blue. You want to take your time. It's about two yards of yellow. When I get to the end and it's all secure, I can trim that little piece of yellow off. See if I've got a little knot here. There we go. And pull that down. And I continue going around until I've got a stripe here. Then I can continue here and do another stripe and then another stripe of pink. Now when I'm at this stage, then I want to move on to another color. And I can start with the same design or I can choose to do a different color design. So I'm going to go underneath again. This time I'm going underneath the whole section pull my thread out, and now I'm going to start wrapping in the other direction. Now, you can wrap above, just like that, or you could choose to go underneath. Now, when you were doing a real traditional tamari, you would really be weaving in and out and doing a lot more intricate designs. Once you have a design you'd like, then we'll tuck it under and add a little drop of glue. Here's one that's completed where the pattern is exactly the same on both and we've wrapped just above and below so you've got that little basket weave pattern. Now the next thing we want to do is create a tassel. What I've taken is a scrap piece of cardboard, wrapped my yarn around it, then I'm going to take a spare piece of yarn, go through this piece, tie a knot, and then take my scissors and cut off the bottom. Slip that off my cardboard and then I'm going to take my yarn and wrap it about an inch down so that I have my tassel. And then I can trim that off if there's any uneven pieces. Let's take this other little piece of string or yarn and tie that off. That's our tassel. I've got one completed here. And then our final step would be to take this tassel, tie it onto the bottom by looping it under, and then take the black cord and tie it on the top to hang it. You can use your plastic needle if you need some help. Now, if you look at the finished balls, we've got one that's black with the same pattern, and then we've done a little uh, wrap one in blue with just pink and yellow. But choose your favorite colors. Bonsai is the term for all miniature trees in containers or pots. The word actually originated in China, but has become a prevalent Japanese activity. The trimming of the miniature plants is an art form in Japan. Here's what you'll need. We have sand, clear glue, a sheet of styrofoam, chenille stems, various colors of green tissue paper, a container and some little pebbles, and then our tools. We have scissors, plastic knife, and that's it. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is to cut a small piece of styrofoam to fit our container. Everyone's container will be different. So you want to just measure out, either lay it down on the uh, styrofoam, cut it out, and trim down so it fits. Then add just a little bit of glue on the back, or on the bottom and sides, and leave it in. Then the next thing is to take 10 of the chenille stems. You'll actually have 11, but keep one on the side. And let's put one right here. And I'm going to take those and twist them about two inches from the bottom and twist them together. Now what I want to do is form the, the trunk of the tree. And I'm going to twist for about four inches. And it should be gnarly and kind of bent. Now the bottoms are going to become the root system. I'm going to put two together and twist those together and leave about a oh, half inch down because that's going to go into the sand and then twist a couple more together. You're going to want to play with this at home to make it nice and twisty, twist back on themselves, make some of them thicker. I've got a single one here. I'll just twist that alone and then twist that one together. Now we've got about three inches. Let's go a little bit farther on his, the branch. Usually on a bonsai, there's kind of one main branch. So I'm going to take three together here, twist those, 
And then let's take this one coming off and we'll twist these two separately and then twist this one back on itself. So that's one branch. So now our bonsai is kind of going like to this direction. Then let's take these two together and twist them. Let this one come off, this one twist. And we'll continue doing that until we have a shape that we like. So we've got our trunk, we've got the root system, our main branch, and then three other branches, or actually four other branches coming off. Now, remember we reserved one of the chenille stems. I'm gonna take my craft snips and I'm gonna snip it into one inch pieces. Maybe, uh, actually, probably closer to two inches. You don't have to be really exact. And then what I'm gonna do is take those pieces and fold each one in half and then come back to my finished tree here and start putting, on, putting these on and just giving us a little twist. This is where our leaves are gonna go. So I'll add them where any place that I think that we could use a little bit of greenery. Maybe some on the end here. And I'll continue and use all of those up. You want it to look kind of old, a little bit gnarly. So we're making our trunk and our branches. Now we've kind of got the tree in the shape that we'd like. Now it's time to put it into our container. I'm going to bring our container over. I've turned those, remember, over a little bit and I'm going to poke those into my styrofoam base. And let's get those all in. Then I want to cover the styrofoam bottom. Let me get this one in a little bit tighter. I want to co cover the styrofoam bottom with sand. So what I've done is I've poured some sand in here. You could use regular sand color or color and I'm going to pour my glue right in on top of it because I want it to kind of be kind of a thick, almost an icing effect. I'm going to mix it up and then I'm going to spread that on the bottom. I'm going to spread it around the whole base. Let's get a little bit more. And don't worry, if you get a little on the container like I am, you can clean that off later. And then I'm gonna sprinkle the rest of the sand. Here, let's get that in. And I can add some more glue on top of that. And when you're doing this at home, you'll take a little bit more time just to make it exactly perfect the way that you'd like. Let's make sure we get enough and fill in here. This'll all dry clear. One more little. Then we're gonna take some rocks and pebbles and drop that in over on top. Now, if you need, want to, you can individually glue some of these over the roots. Let's get that one still in a little bit farther. I don't like the way they want that one's sticking out, so let's push that back in. Add some more stones. And then now we're ready for our tissue paper. I've just taken little squares. You can rip them or tear them. I'm pinching it in the middle, adding a dab of glue, and just popping it right onto the chenille. Get one here, and I'll take a green one again. Watch, I'm just gonna pinch it in the middle, squeeze it up, add a dab of glue, and place that on. You don't wanna put too many, but you wanna cover all into your, your branches. If you take a look at our finished tree, you can see all of the leaves have been added to our tree. Our next project is an origami fish. Folding paper or origami is a traditional craft of Japan. Simple folding techniques create intricate designs. In our picture today, we're folding small squares of paper and mounting them on a board to form a picture. Here's what you'll need. I have a bifold foam board I have origami paper in metallic colors, some 3D glitter markers, and a glue stick. Our basic tools are a ruler and a pencil and some scissors. The first thing that we want to do is to prepare all of our pieces of paper. So what I've done is I've cut two inch squares. I'm going to make 27 green squares, 
nine blue and four pink and then one of the blue and black combination. Now this is not true origami which where one piece of paper would create the whole um, animal or shape but we're going to do each one as a simple square. So the first thing to do is to take your first square, fold it in half and fold it in half again. Unfold it and then we're going to take each corner and fold it to the center. So for the 24 or 27 green, we're going to do just fold them in simply like that and kind of make just this little box. So I continue until I have all of those folded. Now for the blue ones, I'm going to create that same box, but then I'm going to fold back the tips so that there's a little bit of white showing. And we're just trying to do add some a little bit of surface interest and to, and to make each piece look a little bit different. So there's our blue. Then for the magenta or pink, I'm going to take my squares and I'm again going to fold it back, but I'm going to kind of fold it back on an angle so that it's not a perfect fold corner back and you're going to see a little bit more pink on that. And it's important as you're folding these to crease them really, really well and really tightly. So that'll be our pink. And then our final one is just a piece of paper. This one happens to be black with blue or you could choose whatever you'd like. And we're going to do the same thing and fold it to make the eye. Now remember, again, as I said, make sure and crease all of these really well. Run along them with your fingernail so that you've got a nice, really crisp and very flat little piece of paper. Now the next step is to take our construction paper. This is a large piece of paper. All the measurements are going to be on the website and I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to draw corner to corner. So I'm going to start from this corner and extend my ruler up and draw a pencil line from one corner to the other corner and then do the same thing and draw a pencil a line from one to the other. It'd be really good too if you used a yardstick or a longer ruler. Now this center point is going to be the center of my design. Now in this example, um, on the website there will be a pattern for you to follow, but the center square is the magenta. So I'm going to use a glue stick, and you can see this one is purple, but it is going to dry clear. I'm going to put a dot in the center and lay down my first pink. Then next to the pink, I'm going to do uh, another, then it's going to be two of the green. Remember this, even though it's going on purple, it will dry clear. Those are the two that go next to it. Then I'm going to start the next row or go finish going across. Now I've got one here where I've glued all the pieces down. As you can see, the fish pattern, this was that center one we started with, and I've done the first row in the center of the paper and then built from there and that's what made it all fit. Then I've taken my whole sheet and I've glued it to my bifold foam core so that this will be a standing piece of art. Now the next thing or the last thing is to add some detail. You can choose any kind of detail you'd like. I'm using a glitter marker and I'm going to go in and make a design in the center of each of these. So I'm just going to do a little C in all the blue. Let's go back here. And then let's draw some air bubbles for the fish. And I'm going to do those in yellow. And then finally in the magenta, let's add some pink. And I'll just draw a pink squiggle. You can also choose to put a little bit of design along the bottom or on the top or add anything else you'd like. Plus, once you get really good at folding these squares, you can create all sorts of pictures and patterns using folded squares. So let's take a look at our finished fish. Our next project is a porcelain butterfly. Ramari porcelain is usually a milk white glaze with a few enameled colors. Florals, dragons, phoenix, bamboo, and birds are all common subjects. Let's see what we need to make our own porcelain. You need glue, 
vinegar, baby oil, cornstarch, flour, paint pens, a piece of acetate, craft stick, and mixing spoons and bowl will be your tools. Now let's go over the porcelain recipe first before we get started. You're gonna need three tablespoons of glue, two tablespoons of cornstarch, two tablespoons of flour, one teaspoon of vinegar, and one teaspoon of baby oil. The great thing about this is you probably have them in your kitchen cupboards. Okay, now I've already put my dried ingredients in a bowl. I'm gonna go ahead and add my glue. I'm gonna use this heavy glue. And next, my vinegar, make sure I get it all, and my baby oil. And then I'm just gonna use a craft stick to stir everything up. Now you want the consistency of this to be like frosting. So kind of thick, like you would use for icing cookies. And over time, this will, once you get it settled, it'll air dry to a really hard and nice consistency. Now this is enough to make one really thick butterfly or two really thin butterflies, like you can see here. Okay, that looks good enough to eat, but don't. All right, now I've gone ahead and printed out my pattern from the website and stuck it under this piece of acetate. You might recognize this as a CD cover. Also, you can find it at home. Okay, so just take a little bit of your porcelain clay mixture and start following the lines of your pattern. And what you wanna do is go over it in small circles and release your craft stick quite frequently so you can leave the clay on the piece of acetate. And keep going until you have covered your entire pattern. Now, once you get a nice even thickness, you can go back over it and then do some detail work and smooth as you go. And remember, you can get this clay recipe on our website too. That's looking pretty good. I'm going for more of a thick butterfly here. So I wanna build up a nice, nice coating. And you can see just taking my craft stick off of the acetate leaves a nice amount of clay behind. Okay, almost there. Just a little bit more to go on the wing. And once you're done, you can kind of tweak and fix spots that you're not happy with. Okay, now I'm gonna grab a different craft stick and kind of pat the rest of this into tiny circles and just go over it to kind of smooth. I don't mind a little bit of texture. Okay, now I've got one here that's already dried. What you wanna do is leave that on the acetate until it's fully dry and it'll still be kind of wet underneath but the top will be dry enough that you can start the enameling process which we're gonna add pigment with a paint pen. But remember, traditionally they would use glass enamels. So I've already started doodling my design. You can use dots and kind of a, a scrolly scalloped pattern to make the pattern over top your butterfly. Well, I love this blue and white together. Now this ornament you could make into a magnet or you could drill a little hole in it to add, to make an ornament. And you can add more colors if you wanted to because you know paint pens come in multiple colors. But I'm just gonna keep adding little designs on around and some more scallops. And you just make that little roughly edge and then draw a line on the other side and then color it in. We also have the pattern that you can see here on the website if you need more ideas. Okay, let's start on the other side. And remember, if you wanna make two, just put your clay on thinner when you're 
putting your wet clay on the acetate. Let's take a look at the finished butterfly here. And you can see that we've used a darker blue marker and it really contrasts against the white clay. It looks magnificent. And that's our program on Japan. Next week, we travel to another Asian country, China. Hope you can join us. Projects and ideas from today's show, plus hundreds of other kids' craft projects, are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This is program 1306. A DVD set of all 13 episodes of Hands-On Crafts for Kids, Crafts Around the World, Series 1300, is available for $49.99, plus $6 shipping and handling. Visit craftsforkids.com to order. Travel to distant lands with Hands-On. Hands-On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products Incorporated, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. Elmer's.com Floorcraft, the Dow Chemical Company, styrofoam brand foam, make it fun. Floorcraft.com Styrofoamcrafts.com